What if you could grow your business by 10 times over by only working with causes you care about? We're going to answer that question today. And then join us as we look at today's ads and ask the only question that matters. Does it sell? It's time for This Week in Marketing. Hi, it's This Week in Marketing. I'm your host, Scott McDonald. I'm joined by co-host, Mr. Dan Granger. How you doing, Dan? I'm okay. I'm, I have a lot of mixed feelings today. So do I. Why do you have mixed feelings? Well, on, on one hand, I'm, I'm excited because this is show number 11. Oh, very and nice. we were only, This goes to 11. Yeah, we, we were only promised 10, so that's a good sign <laughs> that we made it to 11. So. You don't realize that. I don't think the people are talking, finance and, and our producer needs <laughs> that's to correct. have a conversation. So, so that's, that's really good. On the other hand, I'm grieving. Oh, I'm yeah. grieving because, uh, you know, America lost one of its great marketers, uh, one of the greatest minds of our day in marketing uh, this week. Um, as you know, with the passing of Nate Dogg. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, what, what happened to Porter? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, a as you know, um, and from, we did a show a few weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, about the business of hip hop yeah. and how um, I, I personally believe that if you work in marketing, if you care about marketing, yeah. you need to study hip hop. <laughs> okay, can you, you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a $4 billion industry. No, that, spe specifically, spe specifically with respect to Nate Dogg. With respect to Nate Dogg. Okay, yeah. the, the man was on. Uh, 40, um, I believe, top 40 songs. Okay. Okay. He had the secret sauce to make a hit. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's really important about him as a, an example of the best that hip hop offers uh, to the rest of us marketers is number one, almost every hip hop song, the, the person that's, uh, that's rapping is talking about why they are better than their competitors. Yeah. The positioning and the clarity and the cleverness with which they write and position their own brands is yeah. amazing. The housekeeping that they do, the promotion that they do, you don't hear a rap song where they don't talk about who produced it, <laughs> what label it's on, <laughs> what true. they're selling. They cover I mean, it. The, yep. they, they're, they're masters of they're promotion. They're merchandising and promoting themselves. You're right. Everything is repetition. Mm -hmm. Everything is a jingle. Wow. <laughs> and right. that's how you get a $4 billion industry out of nowhere that changes the world. Well, I'm sorry that you're grieving. Are you going to make it through it? Uh, I hope so. I'm well, gonna... Up and comers coming all the time. Yeah. 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 I'll be, li I'll be regulating all the way home. But, <laughs> um, but, Good for uh, you. Yeah, I'm so. also mixed today because... Uh, so the, uh, some of the feedback that we're getting on the show is, one, that marketing is not advertising. It, all, our focus has been on advertising um, in, say, six out of the ten shows, which is, which is a fair criticism. Um, it just happens that that's the way we've kind of lined up our schedule. And also, those are some of the exciting people to talk to in the schema of marketing. But we've got some product, peop uh, product people lined up uh, in the next uh, few shows. Second thing I mixed about is that the other criticism I got is uh, what I was wearing in the first 10 shows. They said, you really need to layer. And so I would just have a, you know, just one shirt. Dan's, Dan's always snappy. He's got the, the jacket and the sports coat on. But I, I for, so for the first time, I'm going to try to layer. And, and now I look at myself on the camera, and it, it looks like a disaster. I look like a complete geek out of 1998. Okay. But let me disagree with you already, okay? okay. I, I, one of the comments was that you need to keep more buttons buttoned on the shirt. We were seeing a little too much skin. I like the man candy, and this <laughs> is a web-based yeah. show. That's true. I think you should go back to the button downs. And if you have an opinion on that, I think that <laughs> you need to go to iTunes and you need to give us comments. Right. Yeah. Uh, give us your comments on iTunes. Well, I disagree. And I think if you're downloading this on uh, audio through iTunes, count yourself lucky. You don't have to take a look at me. <laughs> um, talking about opinions, let's talk to somebody with a lot of opinions. Um, it's our guest today, and she's been honored by Advertising Age as one of the 10 brightest women in advertising. And we have the good fortune today to be able to drill into her mind. Her name is Renee Frazier. And she is the CEO of Fraser Communications and a PhD in consumer psychology. Her success comes from her ability to uncover the human truths behind consumer behavior. And recently she was awarded the National Association of Women Business Owners Legacy Award. Welcome to the studio. Renee Fraser. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. We're you guys are having a good time, which I like to see. That's we're great. trying. We're yeah. trying. And we're out of time. Uh, we yeah. will see you next uh, uh, time. Right. Now, many people have referred to you as the Nate Dog of altruistic <laughs> right, exactly. marketing. Right, exactly. I really uh, wrap the business. Yeah, right. exactly. So, In a lot of different ways. <laughs> so, so uh, what I think uh, is really important for us and for the audience, part of it is uh, the companies you work with, but a bigger part is the fact that you work with some major names, some yeah. major brands. But your growth tenfold in the last few years, um, how did you make that happen? Why don't you give us a snapshot of what you do 
and, and what you changed that created the growth that you've gotten so much attention for? Well, good question. You know, I, I have been in the business running an ad agency of my own after running a large agency at Bozell and Jacobs for about uh, 17 years. And in the last seven to eight, ten years ago, I decided to be true to my own belief system, which is communications and marketing, not just advertising, can really help change the world. And I decided to finally use the skills that I've been using to sell motorcycle and beer and video games and all kinds of other wonderful products to focus them on doing good. And so the mantra of the agency is doing well by doing good. That's good. So, so how did you build this list of clients? Is that you just calling based on your extensive contacts through the industry? No, or? you know what it was? It was I, I, I deliberately volunteered on boards. I got involved uh, uh. in the community. So I was on United Way's board. I got very involved with the Chamber of Commerce. I recommend people, small business owners, get connected to the community. Be involved as I was in the National Association of Women Business Owners. Don't be afraid to show up at city council meetings, neighborhood council meetings. Get known. Get known for being a person people like. Because People do business with people they like and add some substance or value. So in each of those situations, I brought critical thinking, good thoughts about positioning, often a, a tagline or a phrase or a way to articulate what the point of view was, what we were trying to get accomplished. And that got me a lot of credit. It also got me in the door. So uh, we got an opportunity to go into Toyota, for example, and talk about some of the research we'd done for another client as a result of one of those meetings. They loved the research. They said, will you do something like that for our brand on the parts and service? side of Toyota that evolved and after we did the research they said can you show us some creative media and then we competed and we won a large piece of business from Toyota now your background in psychology I think puts you in a unique position to uh, get into the mind of consumers can you speak to um, how that's helped you with some of the different companies that you work with and, sure. and what we can learn from that for smaller businesses? Sure, I think, I think you have to use whatever your finest skills are and even if you have a good sense of intuition about people, you use that from a marketing perspective. And it's truly a matter of really listening to what they need and want and not so much just putting yourself in front of them. But in the case of the work that we did as, as a psychologist, I'm very in tune with listening to what consumers need or want and doing what we call focus groups or in-depth interviews. And you can do that on your own as a business owner by talking to your favorite customers or people People who really use your product you know the old adage is fish where the fish are so dig in so for example we recently won a client called market smith their color happens to be the color of your shirt yes that's why i'm wearing this that's today. great i've got great yeah. timing they have a fabulous product that is a online product to help you invest in the stock market in a very smart way mm. and they only wanted to go after heavy duty investors people with over two hundred fifty thousand dollars that they would personally invest in the market we did in-depth interviews and i learned with the, they're all men the ones that we were talking to they're real sharks. They want to be as smart as the big guys. They really want the tools and they want to put the time in. And we learn psychologically how to appeal to them. They're kind of loners and they like being able to brag about what they do, but in a very, in a very uh, quiet fashion. So we crafted a campaign around those insights and that's actually what won us the business. So I think it really helps to be able to use your insights into what's going to motivate the customer. When your client hears that about your product or service because you know what the unique benefit is, they believe you can sell it for them. So what kind of resources does it take to do that kind of uh, in-depth analysis before you even get the business? It just, it just takes time and a lot of energy to think about it. So for example, we identified these uh, these folks, it cost us about $400 mm -hmm. to bring them in and fed them a nice you know, a Subway sandwich. And as a result of that, we just drilled down in our conversation. You know, if you own a business, a storefront, a store, you could actually do it on your own. And if you have a web-based business, you uh, talk to people through Yelp, you find out how people are talking about your business, follow up with those people, offer them a free part of your product or service to have a discussion with them about why they buy your product and drill down. There's a process we call laddering where you ask people why they like something and why that's important and why that's important. And you get down to core values. And that's really the most powerful marketing and advertising is based on connecting to people at that level. And now, we have do you, a lot of that. I, 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 I don't you know, want to take... Uh business opportunities away from you where you're telling people that they can kind of conduct their own focus groups. My, my experience is that 
uh, that's really an art and a science that focus group uh, thing. And, it is. And and have and, and I've also seen like a very kind of willful, powerful oh. kind of CEO direct a focus group totally. to exactly the way he believes totally. in the first place. Or yeah. you'll see somebody in a focus group kind of completely derail the focus group with their yeah. strong opinions. You so, get social desirability, that's right. and you can get conformity. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a moderator who who really does control that, and that is critical. I mean, yeah. I think if you're making large business decisions, it's really important. If you're a small business owner and you're trying to add a tweak to your product yeah. or you're thinking of a line extension, it's worthwhile doing that kind of focused interviewing, if you will, of customers. But you're absolutely right. There's a science to it. Now, here's something. We, uh, last week, we had someone with uh, Intermedia, Bob Yolen, and, and oh, he Bob. does direct, direct response all day long. Yeah, I know Bob. He's a good friend. And <laughs> Yeah, well, and he was talking about the value of um, just going to market and letting the market be, right, be right. your focus group. Mm -hmm. um, how does somebody know whether that's the direction to go or even where to begin. I mean, what if you don't have a degree in psychology? You Where do you go your, to learn to do it right? Right. You've got to use your gut. And I, I admire Bob and Intermedia. We've worked together in the past. The problem is you've got to have ten to $15,000 right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's usually what he recommends. And if you don't have that... increased it in our show. is 20 to 40. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. That's probably gone up with inflation. Yeah. But so I don't recommend necessarily you spend that money until you've found out if people like your product. And one way to do that is free samples. You see that a lot in stores. Let people sample your product. If you've got a Facebook, allow people to sign on and then send them a product for free in, in return for their feedback. Mm -hmm. But create a questionnaire so that it's not that you're steering the conversation or they're also trying to say something nice because you gave them something for free. So you've got to control the way you do it, and there is some science to it. One of the inexpensive ways to do research is to talk to a local college or university and see if somebody from the research department, the psychology or sociology department, can help design the questionnaire for a modest amount of money. And so you can evaluate the opportunity. But he's right. You know, if the market doesn't buy it, it doesn't buy it. But you are out the money for buying the media time as well as for producing the spot. Yeah. So that's a challenge. I love the idea of boiling down uh, basic consumer behaviors and try to understand kind of psychologically what's informing the purchase. Is, are, is there some generalizations you can make about customer behavior which would be helpful to the audience? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Emotion rules. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I can say, Chip Heath has a new book out called Switch, which is how do we get people to switch their behavior and change their behavior. And he uses the analogy of the emotions are like the elephant, and the little rider on the top is like your rational brain. And in fact, you have to control. The rider controls the behaviors and the emotions, but if the emotion goes, it goes. <laughs> and we've found in research over and over again, you've got to make an emotional connection with people, yeah. particularly when you do advertising. You've got to find a way to connect with people so that they see themselves in. It and not just ram them over the head with the rational attributes and features. So we always go to those end benefits, and then, like I talked about, the values underneath that support those benefits. Yeah, so, it's interesting. I, I, you know, when I try to create, craft my own kind of very rational ad, it actually looks like an ad. You know what I'm saying? It's like I, I've seen this ad a million times, times before. Right. And uh, when you pull in the creative influence, or maybe it's a music influence, mm -hmm. it kind of changes the way you feel about oh. it, as opposed to the way you think about a product. And you know, if you leave a good feeling in a person. Mind, that's what jingles do and humor yeah. and music. That feeling gets stored in the brain and gets wrapped around the brand. Yes. So it actually creates what I call non rational bonding. So that even when people are not thinking about what they're going to purchase, because a lot of our purchases are quick, right? Mm -hmm. And they're habitual. It's because I feel good about their brand. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you why. I don't necessarily remember the commercial, but there's something about it that, that resonates with me. Can you do that in a print ad? You can. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. With humor, mm -hmm. uh, with nostalgia, it depends on the technique that you use. But mm -hmm. definitely, you always want to have that emotional connection. I think too often people want to just jam all the facts into an ad, when in reality you've got to coat it with sugar, if you will, so people really want it. If we could go back to some of the personal marketing that you've mm -hmm. done um, to, to get clients to win business, uh, what are the things that you did to establish, establish yourself as an expert? Well, being visible in the community was really important. I was given the opportunity to teach a class at USC in the Annenberg School of Communications on research and evaluation and marketing. I do that. And that is certainly a credible source of yeah. um, expertise, if you will. It also keeps me on my toes. Preparing for the class, listening to the students really keeps me on top of my game. I think the other thing was being visible in the community and also offering to do pro bono campaigns. Mm -hmm. I recommend that to people as you, if you have a product or a service, go to the right kind of visible charities, offer your service, and make sure you get visibility and recognition for it. Then other people start to hear about you. Yeah, well, and, and on that subject, 
you know, one thing that anybody that's watching can do, uh, if you don't have access to the Annenberg School of Business, <laughs> um, is you can actually, especially if you're in the, the space where you're doing consulting work, right. where, where, where your brain is your asset, mm -hmm. um, you have to give them a free sample of your knowledge. That's right. right? And one way that you can do that is by using GoToWebinar. Uh, if you go to GoToWebinar.com, um, they are one of the sponsors of our show, but it's very applicable for this because if you need to position yourself, you need a tool to be able to bring people together True. so that you can make a presentation to them and show them that you really know your stuff and you have an ability to help them so that hopefully they become clients. Yeah. If, you're in, if, you, if you're somebody that wants clients and needs a way to demonstrate your expertise, GoToWebinar is great. It's a lot like GoToMyPC, but on a more massive scale, you can talk to upwards of, you know, starting at, I believe, 26 people. Um, and, and you can basically control a presentation with sure. people no matter where they are. You can't fly people into a room right. from everywhere, but you can use GoToWebinar to reach them very effectively. Um, our viewers, if you're watching this show, you can try it um, and get a free trial for 30 days and see how much you can grow your business. We would challenge you to literally demonstrate your expertise on what you're selling, do some GoToWebinars, and if you reach out to us at marketingatthisweekend.com, if you email us, tell us what your webinar is about, we will give you free promotion on this show to get people to show up at your webinar. Um, and obviously showing up just means on their uh, computer. computer right? Make sure that you use the promo code marketing. That's the promo code marketing uh, at gotowebinar.com. Yeah, you've heard uh, Renee basically has built an entire business on going around in different organizations and giving free advice. This is you know, kind of one way to tap into that. Make sure your content's great when you do a, a webinar. Don't yes. bore them. Uh, but if you've got something that you can teach or tell other people and they don't know and it's valuable to them, um, you got a business there. Can I tap into that value idea? Because one of the things I didn't cover that you asked me about is how we built the business. And part of it was by doing well by doing good. Yeah. So we also went after businesses where we knew we could make a difference. And green was something that was really important to me and my employees. So we went after an uh, energy conservation campaign called Flex Your Power, yes. which we did throughout the state of California. Yes. And then a water conservation where we got people to reduce water consumption by 15%. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that it, it isn't uh, that we just focused on the for-profit side. Right. We also learned a lot by doing what we call social marketing, which is actually harder, because rather than just getting people to buy that sandwich or, or try that so soda, we actually have to get people to do the behavior on a sustained level and do it so, because they want to do it. Yeah. So what can, I mean, Scott and I are very focused on, you know, almost all the marketing we do is focused on driving revenue. We spent this much money on the ads. Yeah. How much product did we sell? Right. And if, if we can't prove it, we get killed. <laughs> right, right. You know? Yeah. So um, how do you take the kinds of campaigns that you're talking about doing, the altruistic marketing, right. how does that help uh, somebody that sells tires or a physician yeah. or web hosting? Um, how, t t connect the dots for us. Sure, let me, let me give an example. So one of the clients we work with is uh, Californ First Five California. Yeah. There our job is to get families to eat nutritiously and to uh, exercise regularly, not to smoke around children. And it's specifically focused on families with kids under the age of five. Hey, Dan, two out of three ain't bad for you. <laughs> right. Are you guys okay? Yeah. So what we do in that case is we send out messages in the voice of children as to why they should do this behavior and talk about it in kind of a fun fashion. But what's really important is we follow it up with engagement in the community because in order to get change, you have to change what we call the social norm. You have to make other people feel like it's a popular behavior. So as a small business owner, once you get the word out about your problem, product or service, you've got to create a cadre of people who speak about it and talk about it in word of mouth, stimulate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Social media is a great way to do that. Getting people to tweet about your product, getting people to use uh, Yelp and things, sources of that sort, as well as using Facebook. Having people friend and then send material out. Now, you want them to be authentic. Yeah. So you've got to reward people for being your friends, yes. which uh -huh. may mean a free sample or an opportunity to get a product before other people get it, so they get the inside track. But there are ways to create this sense of social norm and positive word of mouth on a much smaller scale, but it allows the behavior to be sustained because you can't afford to advertise over yeah. and over and over again. Frequency is critical, like, as you know, in those pivotal times, sure. but you want to get the continuation. So you, you've worked with uh, government groups or quasi-government groups. Mm -hmm. I have too, and it's, uh, it's very hard to get sometimes and very hard to maintain and often not fun. Can you give 20 seconds of advice on how to get maintained and do well with the government? 
you got to work hard at it. You've got to yeah. understand the business, yeah. and you have to be willing to uh, listen to their issues and their problems and go with the flow. Mm. You can't be on your agenda or your mm -hmm. time frame. And I would never recommend only getting government business because they can be slow to pay. There's a lot of bureaucracy <laughs> and paperwork. They're yeah. not very good with money. You want to have a balance. You want to have a balance. But you know what? You can feel good at the end of the day. I mean, I know that people bought CFLs because of our advertising. What's I a CFL? That, Are you kidding me? Fluorescent light bulbs, you don't know. They're compact fluorescent light bulbs. Those curly Q ones. Why should I know that? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Flex your power. You've got to reduce your energy consumption by using those instead of incandescent. You're not even going to be able to I buy I TiVo all the ads. I don't. I go. <laughs> anyway, no. Uh, it was on the side of buses, too. Right. Yeah. I don't look at buses. Oh. Can, can <laughs> we? I want to play Does It Sell, but before we do, uh, do you have a word about uh, while we're on the subject of uh, getting a return on your advertising investment? Uh, would you like me to talk about ROI Media here? Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. I, I always like to talk about these guys, and I'm glad you brought them up, Dan. Thank you. Uh, they're a company that I've worked with for ooh, now seven years, and they, uh, they helped really grow what we were at the time, a very small, profitable business, to a helped us grow to a very large, profitable business. business. And uh, it's been on the very hard work of their uh, strategy, execution, and tactics. Um, specifically, we worked with them on the radio side, uh, and they uh, have done an amazing job. ROI is in their name, it's in their philosophy, and that's what they've given us. Um, I told them, you know, you've got one shot at this, and they brought us their one shot, and it uh, paid dividends. So uh, if you have needs, and you're a small business, and you want to start telling the world about your small business, well, then do so with ROI Media. You can reach them at ROIMediaDirect.com, ROIMediaDirect.com, and uh, tell them Scott sent you. And on that note, let's, do, let, let's play some Does It Sell. So as we talked about before, Does It Sell is our weekly segment where we watch TV commercials, mm -hmm. and we all vote on whether or not we think it effectively conveyed a sales message uh, to the target demographic. Okay. Um, and we're going to make a lot of assumptions. But yeah. uh, our first one is the mm -hmm. Nissan Leaf. So let's get that going. That's your house, Dan. That's nice. That's correct. <laughs> and now it's a cell phone ad. Clean execution. Beautiful blue sky. Good uh -oh. symbol. She's talking about a competitor. So the <laughs> car runs on garbage? <laughs> no, your car does. The new junkyard. <laughs> okay, it's a pretty car. Here's my problem with this ad. You ready? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the music and the pace of this makes me feel exactly the way I think about electric cars, which is that they're going to go 20 miles per hour. Mm. Uh, you know what would have worked? This, this, this ad does not work for me. I mean, people know that there's an electric car and they're going to be, you know, helping to save the environment. Maybe if this advertise, if this was focused on, uh, I don't know, maybe the Discovery Network, and that's the only place that they put this. Mm -hmm. But m my feeling is that you've also got to show the car kind of keeping up with the gas-fueled car. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because, yeah. because that alone, like, yeah. I, I mean, I know gas is expensive these days, but I, I believe you need to show a little bit of the power. Renee, what do you think? I like the ad. I think it's part of a series of ads that they're running. Whenever yeah. you introduce a car like this, you've got a campaign, you've yeah. got print, you've got radio, and you've got television and a lot of online. So to me, it really shows you the simplicity of clean and of electricity. And it does it in a way that's really engaging. I actually like the music. And I know you're, what you're saying about a slower pace, mm. but you know what? That, that interrupts you when you're watching television and it comes on because it's, it's out of the blue. It's, yeah. it, it jars you. Okay, so I'd like to throw the ad uh, into the recycle bin um, because I don't think that it sells. Uh, and, and, and let me go off on a quick tangent. What was their slogan? What's uh, the slogan for Nissan? We are slow. Do you know? <laughs> shift. No, the way you move. Used to be the shift. The way you move. They just showed us that because they change slogans every year. Everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> slogans are so useless. Yeah. Okay, then why even waste the space? You didn't see it. We just watched Clients the ad. We're like completely slogans. engaged. They need slogans Clients, to be yeah, able the to the identify client like it, But around. the consumer, you, unless you really they got something. It. No, so if you've got cares. a slogan, get rid of it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> All right, so look. Here's, what, here's my problem with the ad. Um, n number one, if, if you really care about the next green thing, you already know about it. Yeah. Okay? That's you true. know the electric it's, car it's is coming. It's not those people. That's yeah, right. they already, you already got them. So let's talk to the consumers who are worried that 
the car's not going to make it on their way to the grocery store because it's going to run out of battery. Yeah. You don't have anywhere no, to you, do it. You plug the, the in energy, your iPhone at that point yeah, and the, that powers the it. The energy is going to cost less than a tank of gas right now. Yeah. Show me something. People in that space, you know, we've got Coda a mile away from here. And if you go to their website, yeah. they're laying out the difference and the fact that you can go 100 miles in some of these cars. Right. And if your commute is not that big, that's a big benefit. Yeah. So. I think that they really have something unique. There is a way to position it. They're not addressing any of the consumer's challenges I'm, I'm with, with this. They are, they're making an announcement about something that the people that they're telling already know. Now, and they're doing also, it on the web. They're answering those questions. It's a hot mess. Web. That's true. Well, this, to, to Renee's point, this could be part of a campaign, yeah. and one of their other ads might focus on that. But for but me, that ad did not But I didn't see the other part so. of the campaign, and neither did you. So I no. think, you know, the idea of a media mix where one is playing off the other, yeah. you have to have so much penetration in this day and age with all the, with all the fragmentation. Yeah. It's... Uh, an ad has to stand on its own two feet. Yeah. I don't believe you can count on the rest of the yeah. campaign. Take it from Dan. You need more penetration. <laughs> okay, next. Okay. Wow. Yes. All right. Um, All right, Dan. Let's go to uh, Kaiser Permanente, shall we? Yeah. I'd love to. Uh oh, I remember this day. <laughs> it is suddenly, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I remember many of these days. <laughs> You, all, you chose them all slow ads today, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the focus of today. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, no. Already. Dan. He's going to sleep. Dan, My Dan, God. Dan, Dan, we're in a show. We're in a show. <laughs> I, sorry. Yeah. The, all the vaudevillian music just put me right out. <laughs> I, uh, well, is that a TV commercial? It was, well, yeah. it was. So I'm going to go from watching anything on television right, right now to that, and I'm going to stay engaged no. with that. No. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you is know that, what I that, think. What, I, I know what you think. Does it sell? Yeah. <laughs> Does it sell? Yeah. Um, okay, really quick, I'll go. Uh, no, I like the nostalgia. It is such an emotional thing. Stages of life, mm -hmm. a new baby on the way. But the promise is like, okay, we're Kaiser. We've got all these different doctors in one place. That's not doing it for me. That is such a slow-moving ad. You're giving the audience way too much credit. We do not have time to use broadcast to make suggestions to people yeah. and to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to pay attention to what you have to say. You need to engage them. You need to grab them by the throat and say, here's why you need to listen and here's what you need to do. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I agree with you. I think it was way too slow. And frankly, they've got the best subject in the world. You know, we always say never forget to, to add the babies and the dogs you yeah. know, to an advertisement. Yeah. This could have used babies, and it would have been an amazing way to get people's attention. Yeah. So I agree with you. It's way too slow. It looks uh, pretty to look at, but it wouldn't be worth watching more than once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give Kaiser the benefit of the doubt of this one because I've actually really fallen in love with Kaiser's campaign over the last couple of years. Their whole Thrive campaign, right. they advertise on your yeah. radio stations all the time with it. Kaiser was, uh, to me, I mean, this is kind of just intuition based on what I know about Kaiser, but they, they are on a huge rebranding mission. Um, the, the, there was a stigma about Kaiser, I think, as you know, you're going to enter like 1960s communist Russia when you walk into one of their. Uh, their buildings and that I think has changed both on the product side because I'm hearing good things coming out of Kaiser as far as a uh, um, medical solutions and also on their on on this side of thing the the, the, the communication side where they're really getting the, into this kind of touchy-feely world of we are we care about you and we're emotional um, so it it's not gonna th make people get in their car and drive to Kaiser but it is when they've got a, a host of solutions to look at, I think, reconsider, rethink about Kaiser. And I think they've done a good job with the mind share there. So you like seeing PowerPoint presentations on TV commercials? <laughs> I do. That's exactly okay. right. All right I like the $7 can, ad. Can we go to Fancy Feast? Yeah, this is a fun one. You gotta remember the target audience here. It's women. There's just no doubt about it with cats. Uh, yeah. Yes, I actually okay. ran this ad by That's why my he wife. so sensitive. Too, <laughs> because I, I was not sure on this ad. I actually had to run it by my wife and I said, does this sell? She's I'll like, bet oh he... my God, not only do I want to buy the food, I want to buy a cat. <laughs> I'll bet he knows how to listen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That, look at him. He could be playing golf it. today and he is mm -hmm. helping around the house. He's going above and beyond. Uh -huh. That's true. Takes pride in his work. Oh. I think there seems to be yes. Oh, look what he got her. Total family. surprise. That's amazing. Yes, so that's really neat. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Are they gonna kiss? Oh, not quite.
Maybe they should cut to you know taking the cat to college and being there at the, <laughs> the cat's first <laughs> wedding and yeah. the first eight times that it dies. Isn't yeah. that every woman's um, dream come true? It yeah, is exactly, and, and I actually had to run that by the target audience. My wife, who loves cats, we don't have a cat, but if we did have a cat, she'd be buying Fancy Feast now. <laughs> uh, that sp that ad really spoke to her. The emotions, the music, the uh, the aweness of it. What's the word? Cuteness of it? I don't know. But she, if but like. but there's that there's that target demographic, right? The segment that would do anything for their pet, that would do anything for their animal, and they want the very best. If you know, they would they would share the, the food off of their plate with the cat, and that looks just as good as what's on my plate. So you you say it sells. It sells, yeah. Renee. I say it sells. Yes. Yeah. For the same reasons? For the same reasons. You know, every woman, not just does she want to treat her cat like it's an an, a person, we anthropomorphize animals, but she also wants a spouse who totally respects and appreciates it instead of makes fun of it. And that's what's in that picture. <laughs> that's it's, true. It's really showing that you've got a man in your life who actually appreciates and, and responds the same way you do. And I know that's an issue. I've covered out of research that not all men yeah. do respect. You're going to hate this ad, numbers. right? Because you you actually eat cat. <laughs> you well, have. in okay. the past, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, do you know that brand? Is that a brand you're already yes. familiar with? Fancy Feast. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Um, and to me, they're they're trying to do a, a dramatic sequence that basically sells the benefits of having a cat. And I think that the idea is, I understand they're pulling on the heartstrings. I don't necessarily have a problem with that. But the, 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 the actual brand is not positioned among other brands. It is not told why it's going to... How about cats that eat Fancy Feast live longer lives? They don't. Okay. They don't. They, they don't. don't have a point of difference. No. There actually is no difference. Then they should maybe cat... work on their product instead of trying to woo me if with that. If they had cat food that made people that made cats live longer, we'd all know about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say it, for me, it does not sell because there isn't enough about the actual product. You want and to I know about the... the product, the attributes. Remember, I talked about the emotion and that emotional connection. Yes. But, it but overrides that... a lot of the features and benefits. But I right. think consumers are smarter than that. They don't. No. The, the promise of benefit <laughs> that they're going to buy this cat food and live happily ever after is not as good as the fact that your cat will be more likely to eat it and it might be a little bit healthier. Well, I would like I would I would like to give you a video camera and see what kind of ad you'd come up with. That would be really interesting. Yeah, I can try that. Uh, I'm gonna go Tune in that next one. week to. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think we got a wrap, man. We've got an Orkin ad. Maybe we'll show that next week. It's 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 kind of mind blowing. It's a special. It's one. really special. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. That's, All right. It's especially in contrast to the enough. sweet and nice ads you've been running. My goodness, you'll have to show that the next one. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's right. Exactly. So I was 0 for three today. Yeah, you product people over at you Orkin guys will buy and anything. you CMOA over at Orkin watch next week because you'll, you'll <laughs> like to hear what we say about. Your ad. And um, what did you guys think of these yeah. commercials? And what do you think about our program here? Give us some comments on iTunes when yeah. you go there to subscribe. Uh, we uh, we want you to uh, stay up with us, and we want you to give us your feedback because we want to help you grow your business. That's what this is about. Yeah, we and we've been a uh, new and notable podcast for a few uh, weeks now in the the business section of podcasts on iTunes, and that's been thrilling for us and a surprise for us. So we thank you for that. But uh, if you could give us any kind of feedback within iTunes or rate us within iTunes, we'd uh, we'd be thrilled. Um, follow us. Twitter at uh, Marketing, Marketing TWI, TWI, and what else? Anything else? The Facebook, but let's focus on iTunes for now. Yeah. Uh, this week in marketing. And next week, we've got uh, Gary Gusinev, which I'm sure I botched that name, but he's the CEO of CyberDefender.com. So this is a guy that if his ads don't work, he goes out of business, uh, and they've been quite successful. So we'll have a lot to learn there. Uh, 3 o'clock next week, this week in, this week in marketing. Yeah, please join us and uh, have a great week. Until then, we'll see you.